Welcome back to the fishing news, y'all. This is the fishing report. Today we are covering Lunkers TV, exposing the new Guggen Squad bait casters. Not just the golds, which you've seen, not just the golds, which you've seen, but the greens as well. How to make $100 per day posting fishing videos, whether it's YouTube or Instagram. We're going to talk about a little of both. And we actually test fish the new Love Grub by Guggen Bait. Sometimes I start to fight as soon as I see it. Oh, that's a good one. So a Guggen filled episode. If you're a hater, just go on with your bad self. And if you're a lover, come on with it because we got some good information on the latest from the Guggens today. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, ladies and gents. First and foremost, we want to thank today's sponsor, Carl's Bait and tackle. Do not skimp out on going over to shopcarls.com and grabbing some free Guggen Squad fishing rods if you sign up for a 12-month subscription or mystery tackle box, or if you grab $150 in Guggen products, you get a free Green Series rod. Absolutely phenomenal deals over there. To start things off, I want to thank you all for the love on the iCast videos. Okay, folks, so we had a lot of great feedback. We covered all the best of show products. We covered the rods and reels. We covered the baits. Okay, bases were loaded with those three videos. We even showed you how we made this thumbnail that you see right in front of you here. And so uh, thank you so much for the love on those videos, all the comments, the feedback. It was absolutely incredible. And with that, we're getting right into it. We're not going to make you wait. Lunkers TV has posted some videos of the new bait casters. Now, before we get into the video clip, and we're going to even react to some of the comments posted on this because he's got over like 400 something comments, I believe, on this new post. And it's going to take us a minute to get to get through them, but you are going to crack up at some of the uh, the hateful comments and uh, many of the comments of people loving and uh, just can't wait to get their hands on these new reels as well. So pretty comical. We're going to go through all of it. Now, I brought this still image up because basically I want to show you how I made today's thumbnail. Some of y'all think it gets super complicated or maybe uh, for me sometimes it's complicated. Like I don't have one of these reels on hand to just get a beautiful little stock photo of and, and make today's thumbnail. So uh, <laughs> what I did is I took a video, a screen recording on my iPhone of Rob's new reel, Instagram reel. And then I went into my camera roll, I paused it, right? And I kind of skimmed through to where I could get kind of like the best possible image. I couldn't get, obviously you see, I couldn't get the full reel. I'm kind of missing that handle, right? that knob there, but I took a screenshot at the best point possible to then go into my video editor, my sorry, my photo editor, Pixelmator Pro, and create a thumbnail using not only this green series image, but also the gold series image. So I took two screenshots from that Instagram reel, and essentially I put them together and you get what uh, you we've got here today, right? You get today's thumbnail, which is the Guggen Squad bait caster, and then it's got the gold one up there in the left corner, the green over there in the top right, and you can see I kind of even hid the fact that those knobs were missing by just kind of putting them out of frame there. So it almost looks like I had the full image of the bait casters, even though I did not. So little tips and tricks there. You'll also see I put that new uh, little icon down here in the bottom left, right? I had to flip the image of me. Normally it's, uh, I'm angled the opposite direction, but I pulled a horizontal flip. That way it would fit more, ah, better, I guess, with this thumbnail. And then I even added the love grub in there at the bottom right, just because I knew that we were going to be covering that today. And so that is how we got to day's thumbnail, ladies and gents, but we're going to X out of that because we don't care too much, do we? We want to see the videos of uh, these new reels, and so let's get straight to it. We're going to talk about how to make $100 per day later in the video, and that's why you're seeing that pop up there. So remember, if you want to see anything specifically in these videos and cut out the rest of the BS, all you got to do is go down to the description and check the chapters area, okay? Because you can skip to exactly what you want to see. If all you want to see is us fishing the love grub at the end of the video, you can skip straight to it. You know, no need to bore yourself with the reels today. No need to bore yourself with how to make money on YouTube if you're not worried about making money on YouTube and Instagram, social media, etc. Okay, so let's dive in. Here is the video of uh, Rob Turkla's reel exposing the new Guggen School Squad bait casters. Now you've probably seen this one. It's been up for maybe a week or less, okay? But then it cuts right into the, cuts right into the second clip. Here we go. This oh, is the one that you maybe have not seen. So it shows the spinning reel now, right? The gold series spinning reel, which we've actually tested. You're going to see that later in today's video, should you stick around for it. Then we've got the gold series bait caster up there at the top. And then we skim down here and look at that. Look at that beauty. That's the green right there, okay? I like how it's a gray and black two-tone contrast with like the drag star. I had a few folks already reaching out to me saying, hey man, I think me and a lot of other anglers agree that if it was all black, it would look better. And I feel like this gives me like uh, that, that Tranks look, that 200 size Tranks look with a lot of contrast. I really dig it. And you gotta remember, 
uh, like the, the spool, that's all going to be covered, right? The only thing you're going to see with your green spool is going to be that little line around the edge because you're going to have this full of fishing lines. So, uh, so you're just going to get that awesome gray and black contrast with that little green on the spool. And then, of course, you're going to have your accents on the, the tension knob there and the, the, the knobs for the handle. So uh, let's go ahead and play through all this. I think yeah. that's pretty much it, right? It covers it. But he's got those three reels on the tabletop. Obviously, they're handling some big things at HQ. They are uh, getting ready to potentially announce a release date for these things. I don't know. I don't know what exactly the green is going to be priced at. Um, so, you know, fire away if you've got those insights down in the comments section, please. But now we're going to go ahead and go through the comments on this post, okay? Now, there's a lot of comments on this post. <laughs> some good, some bad. We're going to talk about it all. So, first of all, you got Scott Martin Challenge. Scott Martin, the pro out here, dropping the likes. We got Jigging with Jordan. We got Brandon. Dropping the likes. Here we go. This is where things are going to get good. Uh, starting off with Lil Fishy 25. You guys are making cast cane reels look beautiful, and they are a fraction of the price. <laughs> so basically, he's calling these a cast cane. Look, I know cast cane makes some probably better products than the ones I have fished in the past. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure of it. Okay, they're only improving, right? And and I know their customer service was fantastic when I first started using cast canes, but cast canes are known to break down on you. Okay, so that's what he's saying. Then Rob just replies with, "You wear hook." And so, you know, there's that. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes, okay? <laughs> so, we got Ethan Henry, loving it. We got uh, Fish with Aaron, made by Hayabusa, question mark. Rob says the new hooks we have are in partnership with them, okay? And then he comes back and says, any price point on the Green Series baitcaster, I haven't seen any, except the MSRP for the Gold Series, which I believe was $189.99, okay? So, I'd love to pair one on my Green Reaction Rod. He's talking about the Green Series there. And that's going to be a, uh, a sick-looking combo. I would like to do the same. I'm unsure of the pricing. Again, if you know it, let us know. Let's go ahead and continue. Hopefully, they last longer than your soft baits. That is by uh, Leduc72101. <laughs> this guy, Seafar and Ham, he says, not a chance. So one thing to, to consider with the soft baits is uh, all the action you get, right? You want that softer plastic and more action, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of the longevity. And uh, I go for bites, okay? So that's that's my take on it. Rob says, who are you, basically? Like, like what are you talking about? Like, the baits are great, and the reels are going to be great as well. Where are these made, question mark? And, uh, and there's no response to that. Hell yeah, brother. I can't wait to get my hands on that green series bait caster. A little fishy saying, love what you guys, love you guys, but the, but these look so bad. I think he was also the one that commented earlier saying they're cast kings. It's funny how people just kind of turn right around too sometimes when you comment back. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. Like, I love you guys. Um, just funny. Just funny. Uh, <laughs> Bass with Marco, when you said on your podcast that lose copies everything, you guys do. But they had the Mach 2 black and green way before you guys had your Guggen Rods green series rods with that face right there. Like green has been the Guggen's color since the beginning of time, right? And then you got uh, you got homie with lose. Uh, you got kicking, right? You got kicking their bass. You got Sebastian out there um, throwing his green combo. I mean, there's going to be people who post or uh, come out with green products okay there's going to be people that come out with green products just aside from lose but did, uh, rob did reply to that he said where do you think lose got their idea for the color schemes they fed off guggen's colors to go after guggen customers now i've heard that argument as well so nah, that, that that's that so rob turkla what did he say um wasn't the mock series out before guggen's uh, guggen baits got big um, then we got, you know, it's against the law to make the same colors now. Give me a break. Yeah, see, that's what I'm all about. Uh, when are they going to drop? Um, Rob said, when they're ready. And I much prefer that over rushing these things out. That's for dang sure. Like, if it's two more years, then I guess I'm fishing my current gear until two years from now. That's fine. I'd rather them be ready than get to us and we fish them and they're breaking, right? Uh, U tease, he says. Uh, watch his latest video. So this is coming from fair420 underscore 23. I believe he's just saying that he exposes them in the video. From sounds of it, the gold series baitcasters aren't ready yet as they didn't get the approval from LFG and Rob when they was out fishing with them last. Okay, so there's going to be improvements there. What else do we got here? I appreciate that you wouldn't put your name on it if you didn't believe it was ready. Uh, to which there's replies. I mean, their name is on it. They just haven't sent it to shelves, though. But I know what you mean, LOL. So people just wanting to throw in the, out their two cents. Uh, we both know a lot of entry-level companies that slap out trash, Ray says. Um, Ray Lasky Outdoors, by the way, the homie. 
we, we chat back and forth on DMs regularly. We kind of talk about like stock market stuff and whatnot, along, along with fishing, right? We have some fun over there. Oh boy, we got a long one here. Oh goodness gracious. I haven't read any of these yet. So <laughs> my first, these could, this could go on for a minute. I hope you're all ready. Stick around. My first bait caster was a Cast Kang Royale Legend. It was a $75 reel at the time that I got for like 35 bucks. So same with us. Actually, our first, what we considered expensive bait casters back in the day, like when we were first getting into it, I just wanted like a $40 combo, right? I just wanted something cheap. I couldn't imagine spending a hundred dollars on a rod or a reel, and now we're you know look at what we got these days. It's it's ridiculous, but uh, seventy five dollars at that time. So what I was gonna say is we bought like the Speed Demon and the mm, we had bought a couple Speed Demons, and then there was another one. It was like carbon fiber and super light, claimed to be the lightest at the time, and they were probably eighty to a hundred bucks a piece. Um, they're all broken now. They're all broken. So, anyways, now I have a Shimano Corrado DC, a Shimano Antares DC7, and just purchased a Shimano. So this person's buying like only like you know five hundred dollar plus reels aside from the Corrado DC, which is you know another another great reel. Um, the DC7 is on my heavy setup. So so at this point, I think they're just bragging about what they've got. Da, 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 da. After all that is said and done, I still have and use the original casting setup I bought six years ago in sixth grade. So that's cool. Um, I, I imagine those uh, Shimanos are going to outlast that Cast Kang though long term. So much that my spinning combo is a Cast Kang Valiant Eagle on a Guggen Green Rod. My point after saying all that is that some of uh, those brands, but more specifically Cast Kang, do an excellent job making reels in the forty to one forty dollar price range. It's a very tough market for Guggen to enter. Okay, so I will agree they do a great job of making those cheaper reels, and I think they're probably getting better and better over time. Like I said, their customer service was fine. We had parts come off that we got, then uh, new pieces sent out. We got new handles at one time because. They just came loose and fell off in the water, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, very true. I've been fishing for a long time and I've seen a million brands. I've never found anything that was worth putting down a Daiwa nor Shimano. I doubt I ever will. Now, this is going to be tough, y'all. This is going to be tough because I love my Shimanos, okay? I've, I've tried out some Daiwas too, some very expensive ones, and they, they, haven't, they haven't been as good to me as the Shimanos, okay? I, I still want to use more Daiwas, but I was just kind of turned off after like uh, using two of them so far, one very high dollar and one a little, a little cheaper. And so that was my experience. I just, you know, it's tough to beat a Shimano. Absolutely. So I love my Royal Legend, but the Antares is worth every bit of 550 in my opinion. And I, I can't disagree with the fact that the Antares is worth the money uh, if you're willing to pay that price, which is, it is pricey. These look sick. Uh, price question mark 180 for the gold series bass burglar replies good looking out bass burglar what spool sizes are the casting reels coming as 150s question mark and judging by the depth i'm just looking at the blur in the background here i, I would estimate they're probably 150s maybe they're 200s maybe they're size options i wouldn't doubt i wouldn't doubt one of them's maybe a 150 and the other's a 200. I'm just trying to think here out loud, I guess. What's full sizes are the, oh, just read that. Need swim bait size reels next. So, the, so they're talking about 300s, but I think that's probably later. That's probably down the road. You want to have success with your like 150s first, or maybe you're, maybe it's a hundred spool size. So that's kind of like just less line, right? You can hold less line on a smaller spool size. You can hold more line on that bigger spool. And so, um, you know, there's that. Uh, I don't think they're worried about making a 300 size just yet in the bait caster realm. Maybe the spinning side, they've got uh, the reels that can accommodate more line, but this is just my two cents as we read through these comments. Where can I find these? So at the moment, nowhere, Clinton. Um, at the moment, nowhere. Love how people are comparing these reels to companies that have been out over a half a century. Now, this is very true, right? They're, they're comparing them to the Luz, the Daiwas, the... Uh, Shimano's out there and you know Guggen is brand new to making reels like how can you hide that but the fact of the matter is they're going for something uh, to compete with the top brands out there they're going for something that they want reliability to be the number one focus on which I mm, number one so anyways let's let's read the rest of this this is a Guggen breaking into the real world this is Guggen breaking it cut them some slack and believe they wouldn't drop a product without believing in it themselves all the guys use Shimano so they're not hating on them by doing their own thing people probably told Shimano that theirs wouldn't be as good as the ones that came before them too holy smokes what kind of value look Shiank life sh shy ank hey Brilliant comments so far, okay? <laughs> Can't say one way or the other whether it's good, and we haven't either. We haven't fished these things yet. Uh, so without trying them first. Let's cut the Guggen some slack here, guys, and appreciate what they've done in the last six years. Uh, you know, screw the hate in this world. Always have to bring people down for doing their own thing. And this is very true. You know, the Guggens have worked so hard. I don't know if 
a lot of folks can understand how much work that you put in as a full-time YouTuber. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about the, the Googans, like how much effort they put in. They literally lived in the house all together making videos, the MTB house back in the day before they had the Guggen squad. It was just their own individual channels, the decade worth of videos that these guys have put in uh, just with mad consistency. It, absolutely some of the toughest work out there to stay relevant as a creator on YouTube, right? And uh, have major success at it. They've accomplished that. And so people love to bring you down for doing your own thing as stated. Awesome comment. Uh, I love Guggen, but so much stuff in your paragraph is wrong. So, so you got the Guggen lover, you got the Guggen hater. Let's hear it. Of course, they're starting to break into the real world and find a space to be different. That's what Guggen does best. They're different. The thing I see here is a Corrado K that's more bulky. Um, I won't lie, it resembles a, a Corrado in some ways. It resembles a lot of reels in many ways, right? It's got a handle, it's got knobs, it's got, um, you know, it's got, it's got a spool. It resembles a lot of reels, okay? Of course, I haven't tested it, so casting it. And there's me. There's me being a fanboy, right? <laughs> like, the thing is, like, it is definitely very different looking. I don't know if you took a look at the tension knob, and, like, it's kind of, like, bulkier, and it's just, there's more prominence on the, almost the feeling towards the outside of it. I'm not making any sense here. Uh, you can see the brake dial is so much different than anything I've seen. Maybe you all have seen something comparable, but just, um, and bulky, it has that it has that wide look. Uh, I'm sure it's going to feel great in the hand, but but I'm curious. It looks a lot different from a lot of reels, is what I'm trying to say. As much as it looks like, uh, and maybe the Guggens have drawn inspiration from some of those brands that they love in the past, and they're and then they're throwing their twist, and making it their own. Okay, but that's my first impression. Okay. Uh, I haven't tested it, so casting distance and smoothness aren't yet a factor in my opinion. Uh, the thing that makes you wrong about Shimano is that they were huge as soon as they stepped in and will always have an advantage over all their competitors. Now, it's going to be tough to beat out somebody like that, but, you know, look at Tesla right now, right? They're making cars and they're just going wild while, like, you know, Ford and all these other companies are maybe not doing as well, uh, some would say, right? And I know that... I conversation for another video. <laughs> Tesla came out of nowhere. Uh, demand is ridiculous for them things. Shimano makes uh, gearing systems for bikes. They take the bike quality gears, durability and smoothness, and put them in reels, which makes them un- Beatable. And so who's to say that the Guggens aren't working with different companies and brands out there that are putting high quality components into these reels now, right? So who knows? Shimano, but I'm not going to deny the fact that Shimano is on another level, right? They are, they're, they're first in my opinion. Shimano also has the advantage of being a much larger company, any other brand out there because of the bikes. This gives them more R&D. Yeah, that's very important, right? More research and development dollars, that's very important. Uh, money to mess around with, and that allowed them to develop various DC chips. I'm all for a Guggen takeover, and I love their lures and rods. Their lures are top three in every category. Some of them are even the best of their categories. Their rods are great as well. Gr uh, good competitors at their price point. I will say this as well. The reels may be too Far. I said it when rods came out and they do reels next and sure enough, it, well, we were all, we all knew that. <laughs> uh, goodness gracious. It takes a lot to make a good reel and I'm not sure they have it. No one's sure because they're not out yet. That's, that's, that is for sure. Another thing I worry about is their black series rods. They better be some unbeatable rods to be in the $300 price point. I agree. I agree. That price point is where the rods are so good. You have to be a tournament fishing veteran to tell a difference. And I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of pros using these black series rods and you'll get their uh, honest opinions because they work with many different companies throughout their, their years they've worked with. And uh, so I'm curious to see the feedback on the Black Series rods from some of those pros that have been fishing their entire lives as well, right? I've been fishing for five years. Uh, how can I compete with those fools? <laughs> Back to the reels, though. It's interesting. The comparison I draw here is the Corrado K. With the gold reel being right in that price point, it has to be able to beat the Corrado in several lose, Daiwa and other brands' $180 models. I agree. You know, you gotta you gotta be in the mix, right, with those uh, competitors. Otherwise, otherwise they're gonna buy the competition. The green is gonna be battling with Lou's lower end models, but I'd say the bigger threat there is Cast King. Cast King just makes a cheaper product. People are gonna go to it that have the budget in mind, and I, I think they're great for a while. And then. I think they're great for a while. Cast Gang is getting better and better at absolutely dominating the cheaper reels market. They recently released a two hundred and twenty dollar reel, which is their most expensive one. Hold on. I kind of want to get that and test it out. Are y'all interested in that? Because I've only, of course, used those 80 to $120 models. And so maybe we should grab that $220 reel. I don't even know what it's called. Drop the comments because I'm going to check that thing out and potentially get it. Let's keep on going. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my goodness, these are long comments. <laughs> Lastly, the black reel. I haven't heard a number yet, but the green, if the green one is 120 the gold is 180 and using the rods pricing system, we'll arbitrarily use $300. 
is he saying to get both reels or is he saying to get like a rod and reel combo? That's $50 more than a Corrado DC. And that's the same price range as a regular Metanium. The video I saw of that reel makes it also look bulky and as much as I hate to say it, I don't think it stands a chance to the Metaniums, Corrado DCs, Tranks's, etc. They have to do what they've done before, which is be different. Otherwise, these won't catch on. Also, sorry for two comments. One was too long. Duck sauce, we got it. We got it. We're in it for the reactions today. We want the long comments. We're here to uh, to read and see what's going on in the world of uh, and y'all's minds out there, right? It's 100% just a slightly fatter Corrado. Okay, so a lot of people saying this is a Corrado. A lot of people just saying it's a Corrado. Um, love your take in the comments. I typed all of that up, and that's the response. Okay, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, now there's just arguments. We're gonna we're gonna scroll past these arguments here. Oh man, that one's that one's almost too long to read. Let's get back to some short comments. <laughs> what I got to do to get a prototype, <laughs> Jake? I'm with you. <laughs> Are the bearings shielded for saltwater use? Just curious because I fish in the salt a good bit. Now this is a great question. I'm curious myself. I would imagine they're set up for saltwater, but don't go out and fish these in the saltwater based off of that right there because I we haven't heard yet. So how does it compare to a Corrado? I'm generally uh, generally curious. So I have a feeling you're going to see some Shimano vs. Guggen Squad reel videos coming out as soon as these things hit the shelves, okay? So you're going to know very quickly once these hit the shelves uh, the preference of most anglers, okay? Now, uh, probably not a bad reel by any means, but Corrado's are OG. They kind of set the standard for what every baitcaster should hope to be. But I like, this is replying, but like if it isn't as good as a Corrado, wouldn't I just buy a Corrado for the same price? It, I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes. So there you have that. And then we've got 10 more replies to that thread there. So you've got a lot of folks uh, replying to that. Now, Rob comes in actually to that one. He says, we are building reels to compete with Shimano and Daiwa. This is what you like to hear, man. They're stirring things up. They're getting serious with these reels. Ooh, man, come on now. Let's go. So they're focused on quality. From this reply right here, you're not gonna, Rob's not going to say this unless they're, they're building these things to compete with Shimano and Daiwa specifically. They want to go after the top dogs in the industry. I'm thrilled because I, you know, if they can compete, we're fishing them, right? If they if they suck, then probably sticking with what we know. So here we go. Here here we go. This is gonna be good. Stop it with that nonsense. There's a reason why your boy Scotty, who isn't even sponsored by Shimano, uses Shimano reels. They're the Ferrari of fishing reels. Daiwa is right there as well. Now I agree with uh, quite a bit of that, right? So it's like uh, I'm I'm not sponsored by Shimano, and I end up spending the like almost, okay. So now that we do these fishing videos, a lot of companies will eventually decide to partner up with you and want to work for you in exchange for the marketing, right? Because you're getting those views, and and it's not just it's not me. It's like every fishing YouTuber I've ever looked up to. Like I remember when Milliken and uh, Flair were like uh, buddy buddy back in the day. They were making all those collabs, and they were uh, amongst other of my favorite fishing YouTubers, they were talking about the Cast Kings. And, you know, the sponsorship dollars probably behind some of that. Who cares? We got Cast Kings because of that, right? Uh, lose Rods. Some of our favorite uh, fishing creators were using Lose Rods for a while. We bought a couple of the Mox Speed Sticks, you know, 80 bucks. That was what, that was our first expensive rod purchase. And what am I getting at? The reason that it isn't even sponsored by them, Ferraris of Fishing Reels. Yeah, you know, like, just we've gone through... what. The heck was my point? Holy smokes, we done lost ourselves now. Anyways, moving right along because we got the ADHD kicking in. Uh, since you don't allow mentions, SMH, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's just the fact that you can get influenced, I think, by the creators that you watch, right? So we definitely purchased a lot of things um, based on what our favorite fishermen used, whether it was sponsored or not. And I think that's what I was getting at, right? So, like, we ended up using Shimano's because a lot of our favorite fishing YouTubers used Shimano's, right? Just like uh, Scott Martin is. And they're not being paid. So what I was getting at, now we're back to it, is that, uh, so we've gotten a lot of stuff sent to us for free, but we've never gotten a Shimano sent to us for free. Shimano just doesn't really have to do that, in my opinion. They kind of know that they're, like, the best. And so they don't really send out much free gear. And if they do... Holla at your boy, right? Let's get to it. But um, yeah, we've given them some. We've given them a lot of like fishing reel reviews, and they've done very well. Holy smokes! But uh, it's just almost out of uh, appreciation for the great product, right? It's like you, you're going to show off what you use, and they've been 
the majority of our uh, tackle. They've been the majority of our reels since we got this thing started. So here comes Rob Turkle with a, a reply saying, I use Shimano and Dye One now because they're good. Why would I create a product that is worse than the one I'm currently using? I like that. Uh, Rob Turkla. He said, he said, at Rob Turkla, to make money. <laughs> you can't make it up. I like that. I like that. JBG1884. <laughs> we might cut it off there, man. That was funny. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. What else do we got in here? <laughs> Put those green series knobs on the gold series. The divot feels funny. Hey, I like, I agree there. So you can even see it pictured right here. That little divot, I, I do think it's kind of, it's not my favorite, okay? I think it looks a little tacky, but of course, it's a different design. You could say it cuts out some of the weight just because of the fact that uh, there's less rubber knob there, I suppose. Um, I don't know, maybe it dries fast. <laughs> I don't know. I do not know. But hey, um, styling cues, I like the green series knobs for sure. When they releasing, can't wait. Also, it says the divot feels funny. So I assume this person here, I assume Tim was at iCast and maybe like held the reel or something. So maybe that's honest feedback from somebody who's saying, you know, he didn't say it looks weird. He said it feels weird. So pointing that out. Uh, can't wait. What else we got? So Bravo Team USA cannot wait. I'm digging that green bait caster. One of these releasing. Will there be saltwater reels as well? So you know, I tested the spinning one in saltwater. It's it's still cranking, but I don't know if it's made with saltwater. <laughs> made in USA or China. Any lefties? Any love for the lefties? Uh, so if you check my thumbnail, you know I flipped the right hander over to the left hander. But uh, I think the first video Rob put on his Instagram stories though, or sorry, his reels was a left-hander. Bait casting reel won't compete with Shimano at all. So there's a hater comment right there. That's just had to jump in and say that and then, and then dip. Looking clean by No Fro Fish. The green ones grips fire. That's by T Griggs 44 saying the green grips look good. I agree. Really like those. You're a lefty also. I assume y'all will accommodate. They're going to have left and right handers. I think people are tripping right now. They're like, all I see is right handers. This is just what's most common, but they're going to offer right and left. If they don't, I quit fishing. Okay. I quit making YouTube videos. <laughs> what company did y'all buy this time? Hey, you know, that's true. House of Outdoors and Guggen Squad, they are buying up the other companies. They're, they're taking over the competition. Right now, a lot of businesses are suffering with the state of the economy. And, and, you know, maybe things will turn around later this year. Maybe they won't. But I think right now is an opportunity for them to come in, swoop in, and buy some others up on the cheap. And, of course, come out of this thing just churning away with some high-quality goodies. So what company did you buy this time? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> Does everything Guggen get made in China and Japan? Uh, I, th I feel like J uh, the Japanese products, everyone just rants and raves about it. it's the best stuff out there, right? And then China, I think it's just it's just cheaper to manufacture over there. You got to remain competitive, but of course, we'd love to see things made in the USA. So I think I think it's a mixture of both of those, right? So as if I didn't need more reels, <laughs> right? Right? Hey, look, here's the, here's the plus side for me. If we if we love these things, which I'm sure we're gonna like them, right? If we if we love these Guggen reels, I'm selling them Shimano's, right? I'm putting them up on the Facebook Marketplace or offering them out to subscribers or whatever uh, works out best because uh, those things have set us back and cost a lot of money. And I'm not all I, I like to save. I, I try to save as much as possible. So like Shimano's have really set us back. Thank goodness for being able to make some income off of the videos, right? Which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute. But will you make strictly bass reels or will you make catfish reels? crappie reels and bass reels so so i think the you know the crappie and the catfish reels would just be essentially the bigger and smaller spool sizes of the spinning combo uh, or spinning reel i'm sorry and so you know while they have the main size displayed which i think was a 2500 i might be incorrect there i'm sure they're going to be making all different size spools of the spinning reel and so of course that means you're going to be able to target big game you're going to be able to finesse fish for smallies and and, and the crappie and all that good stuff as well so just my two cents there uh now as if i didn't need more uh, will you make strictly bass got it next and we're, we're closing in i think we're getting close to the bottom here but i want to make sure we've got everyone's question there's some great q a here today so so much value i don't want to miss out on anything remember if you want to skip to the fishing or uh, how we uh, earn $100 per day on YouTube and how or how you can, then just go ahead and skip through the chapters. So 
Ah, da da da. Let's go ahead and crank past here. Hope we get some left-handed. You definitely will. Um, da, da 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 da. Hope we get left-handed. It needs uh, left. Oh wait wait wait. I just saw EVA needs EVA grips. So EVA foam grips. So some folks are all about it. I, I you know based off the fact that we fish the Shimano's really like the rubber grips, but preference is preference. Uh, sexy, just sexy. Will they be sold in a combo with the rods? I have a feeling they will be, at least, like, down down the road a little ways. Like, at first, maybe it's just individual. Maybe it's even cheaper to get the combo. Now, that would be, that would be awesome. But see, the thing is with the combo, specifically with the bait casters, I imagine they would only be sold at, with, like, the go-to rods. Or maybe, you know, depending on sales and which ones are like kind of top of the market, maybe like they would do like the go-to and like the muscle or something, right? As combos, which everyone's sell great, I'm sure. But I can't imagine they would do combos with like every one of their different rods, right? It's just, it wouldn't, it, I don't see it making as much sense. I could be wrong. You need a tester. I usually destroy reels after a season. Daiwa and Shimano withstand after a season of use. This is a great comment because the fact of the matter is a lot of reels are great when you first get them. So you can be confused, okay? You can get tricked because a lot of reels, especially the budget ones, especially the budget ones, it's not day one they suffer. It's not even a month in sometimes that they suffer. It is a season in. It is after catching some big fish. It's after getting a few lockups and all of a sudden the uh, anti-reverse deal goes out or your your spool release doesn't work as good and starts getting clunky and then you will almost lose rods off the end of your boat because you open the spool, you go to cast and then it just locks up on you and it almost pulls the rod out of your hand because the spool release isn't working properly. Hashtag Daiwa uh, SV that we spent a lot of money on. So it's like you... You, you can't rely on the first impressions always. You got to check those six month reviews. One year in, this is what I think about this reel type of thing because those plastic components and gears that some companies are using to be a little bit cheaper, they perform great until they don't, right? So it's just, you got to be thinking about the components inside of these things. And so uh, definitely going to need a lot of testers and I'm sure you're going to see more videos and reviews on these reels than almost everything out there once they hit the shelves again. So, man, everyone's asking about that left-handed retrieve, aren't they? If you ever need a tester, I'm down. <laughs> Takeover question mark. When do those get released? Uh, make saltwater reels. Kind of ugly on the bait casters. Spinning looks decent. <laughs> so there you go with honest feedback from Brando Bassin. Uh, got a lot of fire emojis going on. Hearts, people laughing. Um, you got the fake commenters. That's that's when you like make a post these days. Everyone's got these fake comments talking about how you can get rich if you you know DM them and stuff. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, Sly Fox Fishing. Rob Turkle. It's crazy. People are f uh, fighting about who copied who, saying this company copied this company. It's too funny, and I don't care if anyone copies anyone. If the product works and catches me fish, I will use it. You keep the market fresh with Guggen Brands. I will continue to buy stuff Guggen makes as well as others. The market is huge enough for many differences. That's true because you know you can only make creature baits look so many ways. You can only make worms look so much different than the next person. You can only make uh, a crawl look so much different than the next person. You can only make, you get the point, okay? So there's gonna be plenty more fishing brands that pop up in future years that are gonna be copying everything else that's already been done. So I do like the, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, um, I'm not saying I agree with, I don't care if anyone copies anyone, if the product works, you know, be your own, right? But um, I will use what catches me fish. That's why you see in our videos, if we're throwing something that's not Guggen, that's because it catches us fishing and we like it, right? So that's just how it goes. Um, now, I think we're about through with the comments. Uh, can't wait. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I think we're really about through with the comments. Never bought new. You guys should make custom. The day. So that has been fun right there. So we covered the comments, ladies and gents. That was a good time. So we are finished with the rod and, or sorry, the new Guggen reels getting exposed by Lunkers TV and the comment section. Now we're going to take you into how you can make $100 per day on YouTube. And this is simply based off of one video that I made fairly recently, right? I think it's probably put out um, three weeks ago, maybe. Two weeks ago, maybe, if that. And that is the biggest tournament of my 
life, right? It's this thumbnail right here. Uh, Y'all absolutely love this video. Thank you so much for the positive feedback. Uh, there was over a thousand dollars paid out to the winner of this tournament and uh, cash prizes all the way down to sixth place in which we got a little piece of as well as Big Bass paying out. I think it was over $500. This was on Lake Worth in Fort Worth, Texas. And so this video, right, has been live for, uh, like I say, maybe a couple weeks. And the estimated revenue off of it is $90.47, okay? So now this is showing my top earning uh, 10 videos, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in the last month, okay, the last four weeks. And uh, I've got some great feedback for you here, okay? So $90, and these are always a day behind. They kind of lag. And so you might not be seeing like uh, what is actually made today because it refreshes. And so this will end up making over $100 over the next uh, few days. It's still getting views. I've seen that in my stats, okay? And this is, by the way, information coming from YouTube Studio app. An absolute must-have if you're a YouTuber. You got the app on your phone. You open it up. You can reply to all the comments. All the newest ones pop up. Uh, you can check your um, analytics and insights, make sure your watch time is where it needs to be, or see when people are clicking off of videos. You can check your revenue. You can do all the things. I'm sure you already know about the Creator Studio app for YouTubers, uh, for YouTube. But if you're unaware, that's where this information is coming from, straight from my channel insights, okay? So that video has made uh, just about 100 bucks. And now, um, before we get into a couple of those others right there, let me show you some more insights from this video. So biggest tournament of my life, right? Views are 2.3 times higher than usual. Uh, choosing to watch it, they're watching longer. It was a little bit longer of a video, probably closer to a half an hour than like 10 to 15 minutes. It's got 7.6K views, okay? And it's made $90. So we're earning over $10 for every 1,000 views on this video. So if you have a $10 CPM, because a CPM is how much you earn for every 1,000 views, so let's say it's 10 bucks, then here's how you make $100 a day on YouTube. You would post a video that gets uh, 10,000 views in that instance every day. If you can come up with one video idea and post a video a day to YouTube, a lot of YouTubers have done this in the past, and you get 10,000 views, that is $100 per day on YouTube. Now, even more for you. Let's say you get 20,000 views per video, right? You see a lot of your favorite fishing YouTubers getting 20 plus thousand views, right? Now, 20 plus thousand views, you're probably looking at 150 to $250 per video, right? Based on whatever your CPM is. And this is the current time of like the year, like during the holidays, uh, the advertisers up their ad spend and you'll actually increase your revenues. So if I like, like if this was um, the holidays right now, instead of 90 bucks, that video would probably be at 150, maybe even like 200 bucks. So your earnings go way up in the uh, like you know the last quarter right uh november october november december generally speaking revenues are fantastic and into january and it you know there you go. So uh, your videos will make you more towards the end of the year, but fishing is very big in the summertime, of course. And so like in summer, maybe views are inflated. So a lot of great potential throughout the year. You just got to remain consistent as a YouTuber. But back to the point is if you're getting 20,000 views per video, right? And your CPM is 10 bucks, for example. Now all of a sudden you're making 200 bucks per video. Now, if you make you know a video every other day, you know if you're making 15 videos per month on YouTube, and you'll see that from some of your favorite creators, right? They're posting one every other day, every third day. Now you're talking about making $100 per day, but you have only uh, made half the videos, right? Same thing. If you are you know if you're making 10 videos per month, then you need to be getting about 30k views if your CPM is $10, right? And you can see our CPM was over $10 on this video, and so this is just an example. Um, if you got 30,000 views, then now you're talking about $300 per video and you would only need to make 10 per month, okay? And you know, if you get a million views on one video and your CPM is 10 bucks, then you made $10,000. Now, one of the best examples and inspirative videos that I've watched talking about uh, making $10,000 per YouTube video is the, an interview with uh, Stradman and Graham Stephan, uh, two of my other favorite creators, non-fishing related, right? I'm gonna put this video down in the description for you. So if y'all wanna check this thing out, it's simply an interview with the Stradman. Uh, he does videos showcasing his car collection and now just kind of like his daily life. And he averages like a million views per video or somewhere around there, right? At, at least at the time of this interview, it was a million views per video. And the CPM was, you know, good during the holidays. He was making at least $10,000 per video and he was putting one out every two to three days. Huh. 
money to be made on YouTube, right? This is before sponsorships, by the way. So, you know, maybe you're getting uh, 30K views, but maybe your CPM is low for a fishing channel. Maybe it's only five bucks and you make $150 off of that video and you're only wanting to make 10 YouTube videos a month. Well, that's fine. What about sponsorships? Because if you're getting 30,000 views per video, you're probably making a lot more off of your sponsors. Like for us, we make much more income from our sponsors than we do from our uh, revenue on AdSense, like our YouTube revenue, right? Like for this month, we're, we're like 800 bucks maybe or 750 bucks probably. And so that's like, that's, that's our monthly earnings from YouTube views. But then we're making like 400 a month on average through Instagram reels, just posting short videos on Instagram. And so, you know, there's huge potential for the future, but we got to get our views up if we want to capitalize on all that. So, um, anyways, don't neglect the sponsorship opportunities is all I'm saying. You know, like if, if you've got a sponsored video and the sponsor's paying you 200 bucks for that video, plus you're going to get 100 bucks off the views, or they're going to pay you 500 bucks for that video, plus you're going to get 100 or 100, 200 bucks off the views. Or if a sponsor reaches out and they're going to pay you 1,000 bucks, 5,000 bucks, you know, a lot of those big time fishing YouTubers, they're not making a sponsored video for less than five grand. In fact, they're probably doing five figure brand deals for every video that are like, like big five figure brand deals. And so now you're talking about, you know, not only are they making a couple grand off of their AdSense for every video, but they're also making bukus from the sponsorship deals. So this is just something to think about as well. Now, lastly, you can see the estimated revenue is uh, 90 bucks right here. And um, now it's talking about the ad revenue where it comes from. So about five bucks is estimated from YouTube premium revenue, 85 bucks is from ad revenue. And you can see down here at the bottom, 67% of those ads are the skippable ads during the video. So the ones that pop up throughout the video. And uh, so about 70%, right? And so the thing is with those skippable ads, a lot of creators might just do one like every, you know, four minutes or they, you can have them be automatically placed in which case the algorithm finds a spot where there's uh, like no talking or anything going on that kind of a break in the content and it will automatically put ads there generally speaking or you can manually place them you know like if you're a fishing youtuber and you've got the biggest fish of the video on the hook and they know that's what they came for you like previewed in the teaser and all these different things well if you hook up and then you run an ad they're gonna they're not gonna probably click off the video they're probably either gonna wait the five seconds and skip the ad or they're gonna watch that ad and so that's an opportunity to make more ad revenue. Just an idea for y'all for placement of ads. Um, I, I usually just let them automatically do it. Sometimes if I place it manually, that's what I'll do. But you got to think, you know, a 20 minute video, maybe there's five ads in there every four minutes. There's an ad. It, it, all it comes down to is like five seconds and people can skip it. Now, me personally, I pay for YouTube Red or premium or whatever it is. It's like 12 or 14 bucks a month. And I never see YouTube ads. Best money ever spent. You never see YouTube ads. Not before the videos, not during the videos, not after the videos. You don't see ads. Okay. Worth the money, worth the money. <laughs> but then you'll see 18% came from bumper ads, which I think are ones that pop up like, uh, like maybe like in a section of the videos. I don't know, like a little pop up. I don't know. I don't see ads. So <laughs> y'all got to let me know what ads you see on our videos because I have no clue. And then non-skippable video ads. So maybe those are like the ads that play at the beginning of the video if you're unable to skip them, for example. Uh, but maybe just some that play even through the mid-roll are unskippable. I'm, I'm again, not too sure because I don't see the ads. But that is uh, a couple examples of how you can make $100 per day posting fishing videos. You know, if you've got a $10 CPM and you get 10,000 views per video, it's going to take 30 videos. If you get a uh, $10, if you get like a $7, CPM, right, which is probably somewhere along the average, um, then, you know, maybe you're going to need to get 14,000 views to get that hundred bucks, right? And so you can see exactly how to create that income. Now, lastly, to close this thing out, I want to show you about like kind of like the residual side of things. And we're a small channel when you talk about a lot of the fishing channels out there, right? I see so many of these uh, guys and gals out there with 100K subscribers, you know, two, a quarter million subscribers. Now there's more and more than ever, like half a million plus subscriber YouTube channels out there and, and even a handful of those million plus subscriber channels. So this is one of the beauties of the YouTube videos is once you've posted hundreds of videos over time and those older videos are still getting views for you, the residual income comes in, okay? So check this out. The Antares DC video was posted recently. It's still generating uh, revenue because it's one of the newer videos and people are just kind of watching our last few videos and so it's getting more than you know the rest of these videos here. Then you got the iCast videos. Those were both newer videos and so their estimated revenue is you know, 50 bucks, uh, 32 bucks, etc. Then you've got this kayak fishing tournament video. Here is where the residuals kick in. 
this video right here, Old Town Sportsman PDL Review, okay? We posted this video two years ago and it has made us $25 this month, all right? So this is the power of residual income. Imagine if we had half a million subscribers right now or a million subscribers, a lot of those older videos are gonna be generating much more than this on a monthly basis. I mean, I might have, uh, for as an example, or, or the next YouTuber with a, hundred, with a million subscribers, for example, their videos, their older videos, like year plus old, are gonna be a a lot of them generating over 100 additional dollars per month just from the views they're getting, right? Or more. So this is powerful. Now you're talking about doing the work one time and getting paid over and over and over for years and years and years. Wow. Old Town Sportsman PDL video bringing in 25 bucks posted two years ago. Then we've got uh, Fishing Googan Blazing Worms with One Rod One Reel made 22 bucks this month. Surviving Summer Fishing that was posted recently. Here's another one. 13 bucks. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. 13 bucks coming in hot from a video I made over a year ago. This is the 2021 Scorpion DC review, okay? So imagine if, because uh, older videos can pop off too. So what happens if this PDL video ends up like just really hitting it big and the algorithm really favors it and then it like kind of bumps up to a million views and right now you, it's at like, uh, oh, what is it at? Uh, maybe 75,000 or something like that. Uh, 100, I don't know where it's at, but let's say it, it really gets hit good with the algorithm. More people are buying these old town canoes and uh, it, it goes ham. Now, if it gets a million views out of nowhere, all of a sudden, aside from what I've already made off of it, you know, we're probably going to make an additional six grand, seven grand. I mean, the least you'll make off of a million views as a fishing YouTuber is three grand. I mean, and that that's like if CPM was terrible. That was like in the early days of 2020, like March and stuff like that. CPM was terrible uh, for fishing channels at least. And so it was like the lowest we had ever seen. It was almost like what you'd get as like, a, a, I think a gaming YouTuber and stuff or like uh, when you do prank, prank videos, those tend to get a lower CPM because advertisers don't really like who's buying products off of a lot of those videos or maybe the the genre is so generic that you know you can't get the same sales you could as like a fishing company who's selling rods or reels or baits if they advertise on a fishing youtuber's channel there's a high probability of buyers watching right i think the average um, viewer of our channel is probably between 18 and 35 years old uh, generally speaking 90 percent probably male uh, but let me know down in the description you know ladies are y'all watching are you are you watching with the boyfriend the husband i mean we do get a lot of comments about that stuff and so it is always cool it is always cool seeing that but th the point is that you know you're marketing to essentially an audience that is a great potential buyer of the product and so maybe that's why the CPM is a little bit higher for fishing now you get into stuff like finance videos you know I've been watching a lot of stock market stuff lately and those folks are making like 20 to 30 dollars for every thousand views whoa you make 10 you get 10,000 views on a video and you're making 300 bucks off of it? You're making 250 bucks off of a 10K view video? Oh my goodness, I only need to put out four videos a month and make a thousand bucks, or I need to put out, you know what I mean? And they're making way more views than that, but I'm just saying as an example. And now the last example here on this page is uh, $12.57. That is from the world's cheapest fly fishing combo that I put out, I don't know how long ago, but it's been probably over six months. Like how long have I been fly fishing for? I kind of forget. It's in my fly fishing playlist, but this video was, I think my first ever fly fishing video. If not, it was like the second and, uh, you know, it made us 13 bucks this month. This is, uh, efforts from a half a year ago. So the dividends are paying. The dividends are paying, ladies and gents. And now lastly, to close things out, we've got some footage for you. We're going to cut straight to the fishing. We went out to a private water fishing spot, which I want to mention real quickly before we get into it. Of course, you can skip this if you're not interested and get straight to it by checking those chapters down there. But we have privatewaterfishing.com. Calm. Now, private water fishing is out here local to us and like the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. They're also down like as far as San Antonio. Really, they've got properties covering all of Texas now and branching into Oklahoma, maybe even other states that I'm unaware of. But we went and fished this lake, or the footage you're about to see fishing the new Guggen Love Grub at uh, Salt Lake Lake, okay? And so we got a couple images here of the lake and what private water fishing is. It's a service where you can become a member, right? There's a fee associated. And then of course you can check a day rate for a property like this one. This uh, lake would cost you $100 per member per day. Half day rate is $75. Youth rate $50. Uh, or $40 depending on the age. And you get to fish this lake. It's all yours for the day, okay? 
totally private. You get to uh, reserve the lake and you get to fish it. Again, they've got like maybe 100 plus properties now across uh, Texas and surrounding areas. And so, you know, there's always pictures of uh, the ramps if they've got them. The, you know, some of them you can launch a boat. Some of them are great for the bank. Some of them are, are there's uh, John boats on site at most every one of these lakes, if not all of them. So all you have to do is bring a battery and a trolling motor and you're set to uh, get out on these private water fishing lakes. There's full descriptions and details on each lake. Um, many of these lakes have got 10 plus pounders in them. We haven't found them yet, but many of these lakes have got uh, great fishing. Private Water Fishing does a phenomenal job of keeping these lakes stocked and shocked, okay? They shock them to see what size fish are in here, and if there's a lot of smaller fish, then whenever you go as a member, you're expected to actually remove, cull any bass under a certain size, like 12 inches, for example, or 14 inches, to keep the uh, healthy, larger bass population growing, okay? And so anyways, uh, privatewaterfishing.com if you want to check this place out or if you want to check out the lake we fish in this next segment or if you want to check out some properties that you would like to go for the entire day, you can rent the lake. It's all to yourself. It's really cool service. So private water fishing. Now let's go ahead and jump into the uncut footage of fishing the love grub. Uh, this was just the other day and uh, notice my casting style on this right here. So I'm fishing the... Uh, the new love grub on a Ned rig, okay? Just maybe a quarter ounce, if that. Uh, the water we were fishing was probably 10 to 15 feet deep, and so I go and I make my cast, and you'll see as soon as it's about to hit the water, the bait that is, I lift the rod tip really quickly just to get some excess line out and get some slack, and then I bring that rod tip down to the water. And I do that specifically because then my bait is gonna fall straight down, okay? So this is very critical if you're like, bass fishing for smallmouth up north, right? I had done this before, I learned this from lunkers, and so, you know, you cast, and let's say you get right above the bed, right above that shadow where you see that smallmouth off in the distance. As soon as that bait's about to hit the water, boom, lift that rod tip up, and then it gets some extra slack out there, that way the bait falls straight down. If you just cast out, let the bait hit the water, and you close the bale, well, that bait is actually gonna fall back towards you in the water column, right? Because there's no extra slack. So instead of falling straight down, it's gonna fall back towards the boat at an angle, and you're gonna miss the bed entirely. And for us, I just wanted a more realistic kind of like dying grub or bait fish imitation. And so that is why I used this. I wanted a little extra slack out there. I learned this technique also from uh, a guide out there on Lake Fairfield when we fished it with him. There was a tournament going on. The fishing was slow. A lot of people tearing the lake up that weekend. And we were actually beating out a lot of folks in the tournament fishing weightless worms and just giving it slack and just dead sticking it. So you're about to see that right here. Let's get to the fishing. We are fishing the new Love Grub. I'm going to throw a couple uncut raw cast to catch uh, footage, cast to catches in here. And I, I might throw just a little bit extra. But uh, let's get right into the fishing. Check us out. We've got the new Guggen love grub we got a few of them prototypes they got the blazing worm tails on here we got a handful of them we got to burn through all that we've got and hoping to catch uh, one big one on these things one you know three four five pounder today so we brought out the bass boat for the first time in a while come off? No, I got him. That might be a little guy. Oh, he's decent as well, huh? Um, probably should. Oh, there's another one right here. Damn it. Drop the dark sleeper. There's another one with him. There's another fish with it. Dang. We're about to catch two. That was like a three and a half to four pounder trying to steal the worm out of this thing's mouth. Oh my gosh. Love grub brings them all in. Should I flip him on the spinning combo? I think we're gonna try. He's not like a five pounder. Oh, drag slipper aiming. <laughs> Got him up here on the love bug. These fish are plump. What the heck is going on? These are not summertime fish. Summertime fish are skinny. Look at this thing. <laughs> He's been feeding up down there. All right, grub a dub dub. See you, bud. Wow, that was awesome. I thought I'd hit it. I think it just decided to stop. Oh boy. They're out deep. Really slowly then just to try something different. Oh, oh, snapped it off. It's at the knot probably because I hate double uni knots now. I still have like the knot right here. It just pathetic. This is how we were catching them on 
like I had no confidence in fishing it like that. I'm like, dude, I can't even feel bite. He's like, they're probably just gonna be on it, and you're just gonna be Who? able to lift up slowly. The guide, whenever we went out on um, uh, Fairfield, and that was like how he was catching them all day. It was weightless, like in the wind like this, weightless worm, like a curly tail worm, and just, like you might even still be working it too fast right now, maybe, maybe not. And you only have to raise it that first time, slowly, and then you can start popping it a little bit. I was kind of getting some bites, like popping it and whatnot, but you just want to make sure on that first lift, you want to be seeing that fish. You got one? Yeah. Looks like it was biting. Nice. Halfway decent, we'll pop this next. I don't know yet. I don't either. He's not coming up, but he's not pulling line either. What is on here? It's a bass. Whoa. Is it a little bass or is it a big bass? I don't know. What is going on? He hasn't taken any drag, but he's not uh, showing himself. You're all the way to the leader and I still haven't seen him. That's bass. Okay. All right, you can call me flip him. I think I have your line. I think you do too. I wonder if you have, I wonder if this is the fish that just bit the blazing one. You want to net it? Just in case? But I think there's there, a line. There is more line in its mouth. <laughs> what just happened? Tell me it has a, a worm in its mouth. It sure does. It sure does? <gasps> this is the fish that I just lost. What the heck? There's no way. We caught him twice. There's two lines in his mouth. No way. He just ate a blazing worm and a love grub. They love Guggen baits out here. All right, so here's my first fish, but Weston's fish that he lost and he's caught like a zillion today, so. Oh, cruise on down, bye-bye. Blazing worm. Glad we were able to help him out and get those things out of there. All right, let's try that again. I had a big one right where Devin just cast. She, she already knows. It takes a while for this thing to fall to the bottom. I'm not even convinced it's down there yet. See, just kind of got a little, now I think we're at the bottom. Yeah. So after that happens, I'm gonna just let it sit for a second in case any fish saw it swimming down and they might grab a hold of it. Um, I'm in some grass right now. So I just popped it a little bit. Just got some bites, but it's like bluegill. No, it's a bass. Okay, there we go. Oh, that one feels good actually. This one feels good. He's going out wide. He's going wide. <laughs> I don't, oh, that's actually a good one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Straight braid. We can bank flip this one. You can't get in there. Let's go. <laughs> there goes a big one on the worm. Woo. They're hitting them today. Blazing worm done work on a good one right there. There's double up. Double up. No way. On the love grub and the blazing at the same daggum time. That's a good one too. Oh my. Ah! Oh, oh, fumble. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Safe to say they like the new bait. <laughs> oh my goodness. Grub a dub dub. Go, first double up of the day. That is on all the Guggen. Come on, boys and girls. Sink ya. Or subtle jerk bait, even. Oh, that's a fish. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a, that's got to be a bass, right? That could be a crappie, I guess. It might be a crappie. Jump. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Good bass. Oh, a nice bass on the love grub. Heck yeah. Oh. oh. First decent bite all day. All right. Oh. Wait a minute. Whoa. Love grub <laughs> pulling through. No way. That's like not bad at all. Oh man, please get in the boat because we gotta take pictures with you. This is this is this one going on the gram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh snap. All right. That is a good looking fish. That is a good looking fishy. <laughs> oh man, heck yes. <laughs> Picture time. Oh my God, look how fat. That thing is fat. fat, fat, fat. <laughs> Let's get that love grub fish back in the water. Try and get some more. See you, bud. Oh wow, he's had it for a second. Cool, there we go. Give that slack and see if they'll hit it. Oh, this one feels good now as he's getting closer. Oh, this one could be all right. 
This might be that big one we're looking for. That black and blue might be the color. Either that or it's a crappie. <laughs> now it's starting to feel lighter. Okay, there we go. Another solid bass on the love grub. Come on. How crazy. This is so much fun. Oh my goodness. I never fish a Ned rig either. Like I don't have fun with a Ned rig and this is fun. <laughs> so I'm pretty stoked about this. Look, he just shook the bait. <laughs> Check him out. Yes. All right, let's go. All these fish have been good on this property too. You're supposed to cull anything under 14 inches and we have not had any. So that is a, that's a deal. Oh, hit it like a freight train. I don't know if this is a bass or a crappie, but he went crazy when he hit it. It's a bass. <laughs> oh, love grub, catching them out deep. We're just fan casting, by the way, y'all. We ain't even live scoping them because there's there's quite a few fish here, and we know they're just kind of out deep. So we're just we're just tossing them out there. Oh boy. <laughs> er. Anyways. Ugh, black and blue doing work over 14 inches this place has got a lot of keepers i'll say that be good for one more fish it's starting to get torn up uh we'd have to hustle oh got him there we go on the grub this one feels pretty good too but it's kind of deceiving on a spinning rod sometimes i bet you it's a couple pounds ah now he's coming in easy but is he just swimming at the boat this is what you always got to wonder we got him pinned he hasn't seen the boat yet sometimes i start to fight as soon as i see it oh that's a good one that's a good one okay, okay. that's a good one. Oh gosh like we said as soon as he sees the boat oh maybe the biggest of the day on the grub oh, 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 a double bad double catch wow oh my gosh I mean if, if it's not the biggest of the day it's um it's it's not, not the, the biggest, biggest but he's looking pretty solid whoa pull and drag there at the end holy smokes and the grub is held up you can bet we got one of our new favorite baits whenever they're not hitting nothing else this is the summertime struggle cool and the bait that is pulling through is the stuff on the bottom and obviously that grub is gonna be a top contender for one of our favorite new Guggen baits to come out down that pipeline. They introduced four at iCast, y'all. The Slizzard Lizard, the Dube Tube, the Happy Trailer, and of course, the Love Grub. And we've had a lot of fun fishing it today, y'all. I'd say this one's one you're gonna have to add to the tackle box. Let's get this fish back in the water. Nothing under 14 inches today. Catching decent fish. Last one of the day. Peace. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed that little segment right there. That was out on the hot tamale, the bass boat. The trolling motor gave us some fits there for a little bit, but we got it taken care of. Privatewaterfishing.com if you want to look up how to reserve one of these properties for yourself for the entire day. Thank you for tuning in for today's video. We got a lot more coming your way soon. Don't forget the Guggen Squad shorts drop uh, tomorrow, I believe, the 28th. Code Weston saves you 10, does it save you 10 bucks? Uh, it saves you 10%. Code Weston saves you 10% if you're looking to stock up on any fishing related gear. Also, Carl's, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Go ahead and get your free Guggen Squad rods. Take advantage of their 10 year anniversary sale. It's expiring in August, so coming up here soon. Uh, thanks again. We'll catch y'all on the next fishing report. Till then, peace out.